The Aldrich Family, based on characters originated by Clifford Goldsmith and starring Ezra Stone as Henry with Jackie Kelk as Homer. Henry! Henry Aldrich! Coming, Mother! And now for The Aldrich Family. <laughs> to a typical teenage boy like Henry Aldrich, every holiday is naturally a red-letter day. And whatever the celebration, Henry is always certain to be right in the center of it, adding a little color of his own. The scene opens at the Aldrich breakfast table. It's the week before Christmas. Sam, I'm just as pleased as I can be. Yes, what about? Henry. He's been so helpful this past week. And, dear, do you know what I think? What? He's really growing up. You know what I think? What? Christmas is just around the corner. Sam Aldrich, you're just being cynical. No, Alice, I'm just experienced. Any time now, he'll start in dropping hints. What hints? About what he'd like us to give him for Christmas. Sam, if he does, it's just because he's trying to be helpful. Father, are you in the dining room? Yes, Henry. Hiya, Father, old-timer. Here we go. I thought you might like your pipe here. Thank you, Henry. Can I fill it for you? No, thank you. Or strike a match and light it? No, thanks. Gee whiz, isn't there anything I can do? Would you care to smoke it for me? Sam! <laughs> Henry, is there uh, something special on your mind? Something you want to say? Why, no, sir. I'm just passing the time of day. I see. Only, um, now that I think of it, did I mention that swell football game I saw? When, dear? Thanksgiving Day. Boy, it was some game. It was? Yeah. Too bad I didn't enjoy it. You didn't? Why not? I don't know. You take a football game, and you sit way back in the stand, see? And if you're not equipped, where are you? Where? You're right. It sure makes you think, doesn't it? Hey, Henry. Oh, gee whiz. I'll be right with you, Homer. Excuse me. Uh, Henry, wouldn't you like to be a little more explicit? Sure, Father. The game I missed the best part of was the one we came closest to winning all season. Hi, Homer. Listen, Henry, when are you going to casually show that advertisement to my father? What? I I'll tell you. Oh, gee whiz, don't you want him to make me happy for Christmas? Homer, I intend to show it to him. Just as soon as I find it. You lost it? Not permanently. I was eating some cookies the other night, see? And the next thing I knew, your ad had disappeared. Temporarily. You mean you ate it? Ate it? Now that I think of it, that last cookie was kind of chewy. Henry, I'll never get that piccolo if you go around eating up my ass. Besides, Homer, if you ask me, you ought to be more subtle about that piccolo. Who's not subtle? I'm not subtle. Look. For Christmas, I want those binoculars down into Havens, right? Right. So I just subtly drop a few hints and mention that I wasn't able to see the Thanksgiving football game from way back where I sat. And right away, they know it's binoculars I want. They do. Sure. Only, <laughs> they, they just try to worry me by pretending they don't understand. Gee, Henry, you're right. You have to be subtle. You know what I'm going to do? What? Just a few days before Christmas, I'm going to give my father a box of good cigars. Cigars? Sure, and right inside, I'll put a copy of that piccolo ad. How's that for being subtle? Henry! Yes, bring me. <laughs> of course not, Homer. I just said suppose you were. Oh, so, if you were this certain party, would you prefer a pen and pencil set or a three-speed blanket? You're buying me a blanket that travels at three speeds? <laughs> I should have known better than to ask you a simple question. Mother! Wait a minute, Mary. Ask me again. Ask me again. Mother, are you in the kitchen? Mary, dear, I'll be right back. Sam! But, Mother, I just want to ask you what I should buy Kermit for Christmas. Sam, look what I just found in the cookie jar, an advertisement. Someone's advertising in our cookie jar? Dear, don't you get it? Henry put it there for us to find. Oh, oh, let me see it. Mm -hmm. Are you never the life of the party? Buy one of our piccolos and stop playing second fiddle. <laughs> Six seventy-five delivered. 
Alice a piccolo? Sam, that's what he wants for Christmas. Engraved with bluebirds, one dollar extra. That would be lovely. <laughs> but Alice, where does a football game enter into a piccolo? Here, it's obvious. It is? Of course, Henry wants to play in the school band. What? Yes, dear, so he can sit right on the sidelines and get a perfect view. <laughs> with you, boys. Look, Homer, there are my binoculars. Where? Right there in the store window, next to that sign that says, Make Mother Happy for Christmas with a Personalized Darning Egg. Now, uh, what can I do for you, boys? Uh, Mr. DeHaven, I'd like a box of your best cigars. Yes, sir. We have an excellent brand here that comes all wrapped for Christmas. That's swell. I'll take it. Good. That'll be eleven fifty. How much? Eleven fifty. That eleven you're speaking of, is that dollars? It is. <laughs> Gee whiz, all I have is a dollar and a quarter. Mr. DeHaven, could I please try these binoculars in the window? Very well, Henry, but be careful. Gee, thanks. Well, Mr. DeHaven, don't you have cigars without quite so much tobacco that come for about a dollar and a quarter? No, I'm afraid not. Why not get your father something else? Not cigars? We have some nice simulated plastic picture frames. Picture frames? Yes, you could slip your picture in one of them and give that to your father. My picture? And watch my piccolo go right out the window? <laughs> well, then I'm afraid there's nothing I can do, Homer. Now, be careful with those binoculars, Henry. But yes, Mr. DeHaven. All I'm doing is looking through them. Boy, imagine. eleven fifty for cigars. People sure do burn up money. Boy, Homer, boy, are these binoculars neat. Let me look through them, Henry. Let me look. Okay, but take it easy, Homer. Hey, you see Agnes Lawson down by the soda fountain? Yeah. You know how much her check is? Only five cents. Gee, are those binoculars as powerful as that? Excuse me, Homer. Who are you phoning? My father, to drop another hint. Number, please. Uh, Elm, 992. Hey, Henry, nine, why are you calling? I think I'll join Agnes. What for? I wrote her a treat for a long while, and boy, this looks like a good time to pick up her check. Hello? Uh, hello, Father. Henry, I've got to meet your mother. What is it? Uh, why, nothing in particular. I just happen to be down here in De Haven's drugstore, and um, I saw... Uh, I saw... Saw what? Nothing, Father. But don't you think it's pretty interesting to be able to see a check from as far off as 20 feet? See a what? A check, a check. Henry, what are you driving at? Driving at, Father? Why? Oh, gee, I just called to pass the time of day. Yes, but... Well, now that I've passed it, so long, Father. <laughs> Henry, where's Homer? Over there with Agnes and Mr. DeHaven. If things go right, my parents ought to be in for these binoculars sometime today. Good. Did I mention there's no extra charge for the leather case? They come in a case? Oh, yes, with a strap that goes around your neck. Boy, that's a fine thing. Say, Homer, I found a sample box of 15 cigars that I can let you have for a dollar and a quarter. But, Mr. DeHaven, all I have now is a dollar. What? Agnes's check was 25 cents. I thought it was only five. So did I. Only she was deliberately holding her thumb over the two. <laughs> May I help you, sir? Uh, yes. Do you sell uh, checkers at this counter? Oh, we do indeed. Would you like to see them in wood, plastic, or reinforced cardboard? Well... Or if you want to go whole hog, we have a dandy set in hand-carved ivory. Well, it really doesn't matter what the checkers are made of, uh, just so that they're big enough to be seen from 20 feet off. 20 feet? Yes. Oh, wouldn't it be rather inconvenient to play from that distance? Oh, well, it sounds ridiculous to me, too, but as near as I can figure out, that's what my son wants for Christmas. Well, if you'll uh, just wait a minute, I'll see if we have any large checkers in stock. Thank you. Father! Oh. Father, what are you doing down here at the Aporio? I was supposed to meet your mother at the information counter ten minutes ago. Oh. Well, she still has time. By the way, Father, does a leather case with a strap that goes around your neck mean anything to you? No, why? I ran into Henry and he said if I saw you to casually mention that what he wants for Christmas comes in one. You don't say. And, Father, I have a problem. Yes? If you knew a certain party that was, well, close to you... Uh, close to you? Yes. And suppose you wanted to get him something very special for Christmas to show him how you feel about him. What would you get? Why, 
Well, I really don't feel I should say. Father, you must tell me. Well, naturally, Mary, I'm sure whatever you get him, he'll be crazy about. But if I were that man, you know what I'd really like? What? Well, a new hunting rifle? My goodness. You're right, Mary. It's too expensive. Oh, I'm not worried about the money. No? No, it's coming out of my special campaign fund. Well, Mary, I hardly know what... Well, that is, I'm certainly... Mary. Father, my goodness, you kissed me right in the middle of the Emporium. <laughs> I don't mean to interrupt. Huh? Uh, oh, oh, that's quite all right. And could you please tell me which way to gun? I beg your pardon? Oh, I know. In sporting goods. Now, don't you go spending too much, Mary. Nice girl, Mary. Mm, lovely. Friend? Daughter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, uh, say, isn't your jewelry department nearby? Uh, two aisles over, but... As long as she's going as far as a hunting rifle... I wonder how she'd like a pearl necklace. But, sir, about those checkers, I've measured all of them, and the largest is an inch and a quarter in diameter. Oh, well, I'll tell you... Uh, does the set come in a leather case? Why, no. And it doesn't have a strap that goes around your neck? No. Well, thanks. The more I think of it, the more I'm sure we're on the wrong track with checkers. Well, we have this chess set in leather case. Chess? And it's been reduced, and we could have a strap put on it. No, no, I'm afraid not. If I don't like chess, why should Henry? Sam! Oh, there's my wife. Excuse me. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm late, but I've finished every last bit of our Christmas shopping. No, you haven't, Alice. We still need a gift for Henry. Henry? Didn't you send away for that piccolo? Yes, but he wasn't hinting for a piccolo. He wasn't? Not unless a piccolo has something to do with checks you can see 20 feet off and it goes around your neck. What? Incidentally, Alice, what do you think of pearls? Pearls? What? Why, dear, they're very lovely. They'd make a nice present for a young lady, wouldn't they? Oh, my goodness, yes, but... But aren't they rather expensive? Alice, in this case, nothing's too good. Well, well, naturally, Sam, it's up to you and... And, dear, while you're doing your shopping, there's something I ought to take care of, too. Very well, dear. And try to think what it is Henry's been hinting at. I will. Excuse me, madam. Could you let me by, please? Uh, young man. Young man. Well, uh, back again, madam. Yes, these ties I bought a little while ago, I'd like to return them. So soon? Well... Our ties don't usually start coming back until after New Year's. Well, you see, I think I'm getting a pearl necklace for my husband... And I couldn't very well give him just ties in return. I see. Very well. I'll make out a refund slip. Thank you. Incidentally, you've had quite a bit of experience with gifts, haven't you? I certainly have. Well, what would you say it was that handy at football games, comes in loud checks, and goes around your neck? Why, madam, that's obvious. It is? Yes, you'll find our mufflers right over there at the next counter. <laughs> Muffler? But, but that's incredible. Henry would never... Why, it's incredible. But, madam, what else could it be? Mary, you bought Kermit what for Christmas? A gun, mother, a gun. Dear, do you really think you should be giving a man you might eventually marry a thing like that? <laughs> but, father, well, that's just what Kermit would like. And, mother, my problem is, what should I have engraved on it? Engraved? And on the barrel. I was thinking of something like, To Kermit, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. <laughs> Dear, I wouldn't have it engraved until after Christmas. Why not? Well, suppose it's the wrong size and has to be returned. And Mary, wait till you hear what I'm getting from your father. Hey, Henry. Mrs. Aldrich, have you seen Henry? Well, I believe he's up in his room, Homer. I'll call him. Before you tell me what you're getting? Mary, maybe you can help me out. With what? Have you ever had any experience rolling cigars? Rolling what? Cigars. I thought if I bought the raw materials and eliminated the middleman, I might get by for a dollar. Homer, I've never rolled a cigar in my life. Hi, Homer. And I don't think it's a bit nice of you to infer that I have. My goodness. Homer, Mary didn't mention anything about my family buying those binoculars, did she? No. Gee, I went through every hiding place in the house, and, and the only Christmas present I found was a muffler. For you? Gee whiz, no. My parents wouldn't palm a thing like that off on me. You should see it, Homer. Checks as big as that all over. <laughs> no, kid. Boy, it looked like it was on fire. Henry. Yes, Homer? Yes. Elm 303? That's right. Well, this is the Emporium calling. 
Have you decided on what sort of engraving you want on that hunting rifle? Hunting rifle? Yes. Hunting rifle? That you bought this afternoon for the young man. Are you sure you're calling Aldridge? Yes. Elm 303? Yes. And somebody here bought a, a hunting rifle? Yes. Hello? Oh, boy. Only maybe you shouldn't have told me that. Oh, it's for you? Yeah, you better call back later and speak to either my mother or father. Goodbye. Homer, did you hear that? I'm getting a hunting rifle for Christmas. Boy, and to think all I asked for was a piccolo. Boy, oh, that just goes to prove what a few subtle hints can do. The subtle hints he's been dropping have led his parents to buy him a muffler and a piccolo. Only now, Henry believes they've bought him a hunting rifle, which is really Mary's present to her boyfriend. The scene opens in the Aldrich living room, and it's Christmas Eve. A snow shovel? Mother, you're giving father a snow shovel for Christmas? Mary, let me finish. First, your father will give me my pearl necklace. Then I'll give him his snow shovel. And, Mary, you're going to see the longest face you've ever seen. Well, I should think so. And then I'll give him his real present, a lovely chess set in a leather case. A chess set? Yes, I saw him admiring it in the Emporium the other day. Oh, Mother, you're so sweet. Oh, and, Mary, I feel so warm. So do I. The house has been so different since Father insulated it. I didn't mean that. I mean everything's so perfect. Hello, Mother. Hello, dear. Hello, Mary. Hello, Henry. Would anybody like me to make them a glass of eggnog? Eggnog, Henry? Sure. That's just the thing I'm in the mood to make. Well, thank you just the same, dear. Hey, Henry. Mary, please phone Mrs. Dixon and make sure she launders our good tablecloth in time for Christmas dinner. Henry, I got that box of cigars from my father. You did? For a dollar? Sure, from Willie Marshall. I didn't know Willie smoked cigars. He doesn't. This is a box his uncle sent his father. No kidding. Sure. Mr. Marshall said the way he feels about his wife's family, he wouldn't smoke them with a ten-foot pole. I'll get that. I don't mind answering it, Mary. I'm practically there. Hello? Hello, Mary. Uh, this is Kermit. Oh, hello, Kermit. Hello. 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 <laughs> uh, how have you been? Fine, Kermit. You had the sniffles when I left last night. I've been worried. You have? Isn't that sweet? How are they? Who? The sniffles. Oh, fine. Uh, I've, uh, I've just finished my Christmas shopping. You have? Kermit, I certainly hope you didn't get anything from me. Well, I... Uh, oh, Kermit, you shouldn't have. It's something you wear on your hand. Really? Kermit, you're teasing. No, I'm not. And, and they're made of pigskin. Oh. 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 <laughs> That's all the hints I'm going to give you. Oh. Well, I, I certainly hope you won't ask me to give you any hints about what I got you. I won't. You won't? Well, I'll give you a tiny hint. Just keep your eye on the bullseye. On the bullseye? And I'm not going to say another word. Gee, that's a puzzler. It is. Well, I can't think of what it could be, unless it's a gun. A gun? But I know you wouldn't be foolish enough to buy a thing like that. What? Not for a guy who served four years in the infantry. <laughs> well, well, naturally, I didn't. Uh, that is why would I? Oh, my goodness. Is anything wrong, Mary? No, no, but I have to hang up. Are your sniffles coming back? Kermit, I haven't time to explain goodbye. Oh, my goodness. Hey, where's Mary? What's wrong? Henry, out of my way. Don't you realize all the stores close at 7 tonight? Are you looking for something in that closet, Mary? My goodness, I hope it isn't too late. Mary, Mary, what are you doing? Henry, let go. I've got to return this right away. Return it? Listen, Mary, put that down. Henry, out of my way. Mother! Mary, don't you move another step. Mother! Henry, I warn you. What's all the shouting about? What's going on? Mother, Mary's going to return my Christmas present. Mary, that muffler's for Henry. Muffler? <laughs> Returning Kermit's gun. Kermit's gun? Kermit? Now, please, let me go, Henry. I'll never be able to return it in time. But, but... Henry, 
Henry, you didn't think that gun was for you instead of Kermit, did you? Why, I... For Henry, Alice. For Henry. If that gun was for anyone, it was for... For... For whom? Kermit. <laughs> and excuse me. Where are you going? Up to my room. And I hope Mary's very happy with her pearls. Mary? The pearls are for... <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> Boy, that's a fine thing. Henry, where are you going? Out, Mother. Just out. Dear, you haven't got your coat on. Gee, who cares? Well, at least take your new muffler. Mother, I... I'd rather not even mention that muffler. <laughs> out in the street. Here's your coat. Gee, thanks, Mother. Don't think I'm forgiving you, Henry. But if you get sick, I'm the one who'll have to suffer for it. Now put it on. Yes, Mother, and look. Henry, I... is that you? Sam! Alice, what are you doing out here? Sam, I know we agreed not to speak to Henry, but... Father, what's that under your arm? Why, why, uh... Gee whiz, it's my lumber jacket. Henry, I'm still the one who has to pay the doctor's bill. Gee, thanks. Well, Alice... Shall we go home? You're going? Before I wish a Merry Christmas to you all? What? Merry Christmas, Henry. Yes. Merry Christmas, son. Gee. Gee, listen to what they're singing. Love and joy come to you. And to you also, too. And God bless you. Oh, Father. Father, could, could I apologize for thinking that gun was for me? Well, that's all right, son. We all make mistakes. Silly, forget it. I'm curious. Well, a pair of binoculars I saw in DeHaven. Binoculars? But, gee, they don't compare to a muffler. Yes. Well, shall we all go home now and trim the tree? Why, uh, uh, I'll tell you, Alice, uh, suppose you go home and start without me. I just remembered I, um, uh, I ran out of uh, cigars. Don't buy them from Willie, Father. They blow up in your face. <laughs> well, dear, shall we start for home? Why, before we do... 
could I go into this store here and put in one phone call? To whom? To Haven's Drug Store, and tell Mr. De Haven not to sell my binoculars before Father gets there. <laughs> Same time, same station, for another sparkling half hour with your favorite youngster, his family, and his pals. The Aldrich Family, starring Ezra Stone, is written by Clifford Goldsmith. The Aldrich Family is distributed nationally by Nostalgia Broadcasting Corporation, Cedar Rapids, Iowa.